Today we'll be making the brilliant British Cromwell. The Cromwell was a cruiser tank built late into World War II. It looks a lot like a smaller, faster version of a Churchill, and it's one of my favorite British tanks of World War II. This cardboard tank took about three weeks to build, and hopefully looking at it will tell you why. As always, this tank was requested by the polls on my channel. This time, due to bad Wi-Fi though, I accidentally made two polls, and somehow we got two winners. I'm guessing no one likes the Panzer IV? Since the poll with the Cromwell had more votes, I'll be making this one first. The next one will be the Porsche Tiger. I don't think that after watching this video, you'll be able to replicate or make something exactly like this, but hopefully you'll learn a thing or two. So without any further waiting, let's get into the tutorial. At the start of this project, I said to myself that I would try making something simple, something easy. At this time, I just finished the mouse, and I didn't want to put myself through hell again, so I wanted to tone down my... effort, I guess. But that ended up not happening, not the slightest bit. The references I'll be using to make this tank will be this 3D model on Sketchfab, as well as some Google images. After cutting out some cardboard, I start constructing the tank. As always, I don't use measurements, so I'm just gluing on pieces with eye measurements. My next tips and tricks video should be on scaling, so that should probably help you out a bit. If later on I realize that a piece is glued on at an inaccurate angle, I can always fix it since hot glue is a little flexible. For the front of the tank, the cardboard gave away a, well, cardboard texture. As seen from the lines. This is barely noticeable after you paint it, but it's still there, so to cover it up, I just covered it with paper. Afterwards, the front of the tank is cut out and glued on. If you're making a very accurate version of this tank, the front will be a very weird shape. The front of the Cromwell is made by multiple layers of cardboard to give it this thickness. This is to replicate the thickness of the armor. Next, the top of the tank is measured and cut out. To make things more complicated, the top of the tank has two different sizes. That's why it's split up into two parts. A hole for the turret is cut out on the front piece of cardboard. Then it's glued on. At this time I start working on the turret. First another circle is cut out which is about the width of the top of the tank but a little bit less. This will be the very bottom of the turret. After that the actual turret shape is sketched out. I suggest using a blueprint for reference on this one. The sides of the turret are then glued on. Since the top of the turret is a little slanted on the front, I cut a little angle onto the sides. The frontal plate of the turret has a hole for the gun mounting, and it is a really weird shaped hole. Later on, more and more things will be glued on with white glue instead of hot glue. This is because later on we'll be working with smaller materials and white glue is just more accurate. This is the case for the turret as well. The frontal piece of the turret is also a little thicker to create that armor thickness. The gun is made with parts of a mechanical pencil, some paper, and some cardboard. I won't go into details on how I made this because that would be such a pain, but maybe it'll be a subject of another tips and tricks video. The gun elevation mechanism is also not explained. Of course, you can always have a static gun barrel. The top of the turret is split into two parts due to the slant. The second part is traced out. Then two main hatches are traced out onto the top. This is so I can make hatches that can open and close. If you're wondering why I use the blades but not a knife, it's because I just can't afford a knife. To give the top a little bit more detail, I glue on a paper piece that is a little smaller. This will give an outline of sorts onto the top of the turret. Now that things are finished here, it's glued on. To mount the turret, I make a turn mechanism to allow the turret to turn 360. This includes using the two circles that I cut out before and gluing them together. They are then stuck into the hole we cut into the tank before. Then another circle is glued into the interior to stop the mechanism from coming apart. After you know it works, you can glue on the turret onto that circle. The reason the circle is white now was because I stripped away some of the cardboard because it was too thick. With the base of the turret done, you can work on the rest of the hole. 
The back and sides are glued on. The side is just a big huge piece of cardboard that is glued on. Then it's trimmed out leaving a little bit of it on the front for the track coverings. With that, the track coverings are then glued on. This of course is done for both sides. The sides on the top of the tank are made out of paper because they're smaller. Storage bins are also made. After that, the back top is glued on. As a reminder, this is glued on separately because it's a little wider than the other part. Pieces of paper are then carefully cut out to form the panels on the back. And with that, you should have the final body of the tank. From here and onwards, we'll only be adding things to the tank, such as details, wheels, or anything else. For me, I like adding details that are bigger before adding smaller ones. This includes this back part of the tank and the storage bins. The bumps, bolts, or what, what are these things? Anyways, these things are made with just white glue that is dropped onto a piece of paper. After they're dried, you can glue them onto their positions on the turret. These drops though can be an unreliable shape, so sometimes they can be smaller or bigger than what you want. Of course, I won't go over how to make every single intricate detail on this tank. That would take a lot of excess time. But in short, all the details are made out of household items like paper, cardboard, some wires, or maybe some toothpicks. Soon I finished all the details and it was time to paint it. Wait, you might be asking, where are the wheels? For this model, I decided to make the wheels separately and paint them separately to make them better, I guess? This tank is painted with a base coat of just some green. For this tank's wheels, the wheels are hollow, I guess you could say. To replicate this, I cut out a simple circle that is the size of the wheel. This circle is then glued onto a piece of cardboard that has a hole into it. After it's dried, you can trim it out and get this. This will make a cardboard ring around your wheel or circle and you can repeat it to make it thicker. On the final cardboard ring, it is a little bit wider than the last ones. Soon you have your wheel and you can use paper to cover up the sides which may look ugly. Details are also added to the inside of the wheel. And after this, 10 more are made and painted. The gear or drive sprocket is made by just getting a circle and cutting teeth into it. A circle is then cut out into the middle of it and it's glued onto some detailed parts. The idler wheels are made the same way as the other wheels, just smaller. These are then painted the same color as the tank and black is painted onto the rubber parts of the wheels. Finally, they are glued on. As seen from this footage, I keep putting on the wheels and adjusting them or taking them off to level them. Usually this is done off camera so you don't see it. Now you have the finished tank excluding the tracks. You could always end it right here and keep the tank a flat green color, but I always want to give my tanks a little personality and uniqueness. So for the camouflage, I was going to go for this camouflage which was pretty unique and it was from another modeler. But over time I realized that this camouflage isn't really camouflage, it's, it's more like just some squares. And over time after painting it, I didn't really like the look of it. In order to save this model, since I already painted on this camouflage, I had to make something that could blend with it. So instead I switched to this other geometric camouflage from World of Tanks. This camouflage looks really cool and it's comprised of just polygons. But sadly, this camouflage took 4 days to paint on. Using a toothpick or a cocktail stick, I meticulously paint on different shapes. I had to use about 7 different shades of green. Finally, I ended up with this. At this point, my tank looked a lot like a piece of modern art. The last steps were making the tracks and painting on any details. The tracks are just corrugated cardboard that is cut out into strips. Since I wanted more detail into my tracks, I cut into each of the tracks every one corrugation, I guess. Making these types of tracks will take a lot of uh, dedication, so if you are going to do it, be prepared. With the tracks done, I shoved them into the tank. I also painted on some symbols onto the tank. Now the tank was finished. 
As always, thank you to everyone that participated in the polls. I had a lot of fun making this tank, especially with the camouflage. The next how-to video will be the Porsche Tiger, and maybe some other videos in between. Finally, thank you all for watching.